Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. I'm making this video, I know I just made a video about Carl Jung and uh, my criticisms of the book Jung, uh, The Young Cult by Richard Knoll. Um, I'm making this video because I intended on making this video anyway, but this is directly linked to that video that I just made. Um, and so I'll put the link in the description section below for those of you who are interested. Basically, Richard Knoll is a clinical psychologist who criticized Jung and Jung's uh, psychological views. And um, the reason why this is so important to talk about this book here that I'm holding in my hands, this is a massive volume called The Red Book uh, by Carl, by C.G. Jung, is uh, two reasons. One, because the book itself was not released when Richard Knoll um, made his criticisms of Jung. Um, what the contents of this book was basically known by Knoll and Jungian analysts and uh, laymen at large uh, was only was only known through Jung's autobiography, Memories, Dreams, Reflections, and a couple other uh, seminars he gave where he talked about his own experiences with his own unconscious and the collective unconscious. Um, and it, you know he would talk about certain aspects and certain dreams that are in this book, but uh, the book itself was not available to be read. Jung considered this to be his greatest achievement and is considered to be the nucleus of the works that came after uh, this book. Uh, he did this book over the course of several years, but it began with uh, his break with Sigmund Freud, and he essentially uh, began experiencing visions, uh, hallucinations, and he felt that he was losing his mind. But instead of fearing it, he decided to confront his own unconscious and decide what his dreams and via active imagination, um, the art of essentially uh, entering a meditative state and uh, allowing any thoughts or fantasies you have surface uh, sort of like an in-between place between consciousness and unconscious and he also used um, you know artistic uh, means uh, drawings and paintings to elaborate on what his unconscious was trying to tell him uh, so this is important to talk about this book because it just came out not that long ago in the description section, I'm going to post an article from the New York Times that discusses the, uh, the editing and the publication of this book and a YouTube video, which is short, but it also serves as an um, introduction to the book as well. Um, I'm going to... Oh, the second reason why this is important is because the editor of the book, Sono Shamdasani, has written three books that talk about Jung and his contribution to psychology, and uh, I believe all three of them serve as a refutation to Richard Knoll as well. I'll be reading those three books, and in the future videos, I will be talking about Shamdasani's defense of Jung. Uh, also, to be consistent in the description section, I'm going to post an excellent article by a, um, uh, I believe he's a professor of psychology, and his refutation of Richard Knoll as well. So, I'm just going to show you, because the, this book is amazing. It has these sort of images here, Jung essentially uh, wrote the text and then did accompanying illustrations. And these are all um, visions, but mainly dreams, uh, that he had when he was experiencing this uh, break with Freud. And he started to have these uh, dreams uh, with which he dealt with the unconscious, his unconscious, and then subsequently the collective unconscious as well. So he started, uh, these are some of the images that he reproduced uh, during this time. He first wrote these in these black journals. Uh, they were a series of journals that he did. Um, and then he later on in his life uh, adapted the black journals into a gigantic red volume, hence the name The Red Book. And so this publication is a translation. I'm showing you the original German in some of the illustrations here, but... Um, the other half is the English translations with commentary done by Sham Dasani, which puts it in its historical context. Now, what's important about this book is, I, I mentioned Richard Knoll a number of times in this video already, but one thing Richard Knoll accuses Jung of doing is essentially hating on Christianity, the Judeo-Christian tradition, and trying to start his own religion. And as I mentioned in the previous video, and I'll mention this in future videos when the topic arises, that Jung simply wanted to bring to the forefront um, basically the uh, continued tradition of a more personal religion. And uh, he sought the uh, works of mystics of all religions, uh, whether Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Judeo-Christian tradition, uh, Islamic tradition as well. 
and uh, also Plato, uh, Socrates, uh, and contemporaries. And he found a continuous message of individual experiences where people were experiencing the divine. And he found that they were basically all speaking the same language, regardless of what religion they belonged to. Now, Richard Knoll accuses Jung of basically being a mythric or Mithra uh, mystery religion cult uh, leader, essentially, that he was inspired by the Mithra mystery cult. And what's fascinating is that when you read his book, Symbols of Transformation, which was written before this, before the Red Book, and I'll be doing a separate video on Symbols of Transformation, you find that Mithra is only one of the myths discussed out of the dozens upon dozens of myths that are mentioned and interpreted by Jung in that book. Um, and so it's a... Um, Richard Knoll in The Young Cult uh, does an excellent job of only talking about one aspect of Jung's, and, and by one I mean about 1% of Jung's views on symbols that uh, have to do with psychology. Um, another thing that should be in, noted is that um, there was a statement by Jung uh, that he made when he right before he died, and it's in the famous interview called Face to Face with Carl Jung, and I'll be posting a link to that. Uh, there's, it, it's in, uploaded as, as four parts here on YouTube. I'll be linking the first part so you can uh, everyone can watch it. In this video, Jung is asked uh, if he believes in God, and Jung's response is now. And the individual says, and then he says, uh, Jung continues to say, it's difficult to answer. I don't believe, I know. Uh, and many people were confused by this. What did he mean by he knew uh, God, or knew that God existed, as opposed to just believing that God existed? Uh, the answer is here in the Red Book. And so the only statement, and uh, there's a quotation where Jung says that if anybody reads his words as a proof that God exists, uh, they are uh, in error. He is basically proving that one of the major archetypes in the collective unconscious is the God image or the God archetype. In other words, uh, in our collective unconscious, we have uh, the need to pursue a higher power, whatever that might be on a subjective unconscious and conscious level. Uh, one thing that's interesting is Jung never really talks about his personal beliefs about God, except at one point here in the Red Book. And the context is that he uh, talks about God in the context of the uh, mystics of all religions, and also specifically Hinduism and Taoism, where he says that he, in his view, God is so transcendent that we can never know, know him for certain. However, in our psyches, since if God did create us, then our psyches must have been created by God. And so, and so, therefore, by understanding our entire individual self, our conscious and unconscious, we come to know God. And the commentary for that passage here in the Red Book, uh, the commentary reads that that statement is the reason why, when Jung is an elderly man in that BBC interview that you can watch, uh, he says he doesn't believe he knows. Um, and that is his view. So, if anything, if Richard Knoll wants to accuse Jung of anything, and the scholar whose article I've posted makes this conclusion, or makes this statement as well, that if Richard Knoll which wishes to uh, accuse Jung of anything, he should accuse him of being a closeted um, Hindu, or Buddhist, or Taoist, who uh, did not reject the Judeo-Christian Islamic tr tradition, but rather wished to discuss the more mystical and personal experiences those religions offer uh, its followers, as opposed to the overgeneralized, organized religious aspect, which so many people around the world are used to talking about, but neglect the more personal aspects of their faith. That is essentially what Jung is getting at uh, in his psychology. Um, also in this book, he talks about his, uh, his unconscious reveals to him the concept of psychological types, which I'll make separate videos about psychological types in his book, Psychological Types in the Future. But this is the first place where Jung is exposed to the idea of the, um, the opposites, or the issue of the conflict of opposites in our own psychological makeup. And that uh, we have opposite ways of thinking, uh, and hence personality types. So there are people out there that, you, that are ex extroverted, introverted, that have thinking, feeling, sens sensation, intuition. And his unconscious teaches him via these different symbols of like Philemon, the old wise, the wise old man, etc., that uh, basically in Jung and in, indeed in everyone are these different ways of viewing reality, uh, different personality uh, types or aspects of our personalities. 
and that they are opposites. If there can be a union of opposites, we can achieve a total individual existence via uh, conscious and unconscious faculties. Uh, I'll explain that in more detail in future videos. That might that statement was probably really confusing and vague, but I'll get into it in more details in the future. Um, so again, the, the, the biggest flaw, in my opinion, and this is the opinion of other people like Sona Shamdasani, uh, is that one of the flaws of Richard Knoll's assessment of Jung is that, well, frankly, the Red Book was not available to the general public. Uh, this book explains Jung, how Jung came about, his views on the collective unconscious, and many of the symbols that he describes and symbols of transformation. That was his book that he wrote that signaled the split between him and Freud. He experiences some of these symbols in a personal, unconscious fashion here in the Red Book. And so this is almost a personal uh, uh, testament to the theories that he, he hypothesized in that previous book. Um, a quotation at the back of the book here reads, uh, The years of which I've spoken to you when I pursued the inner images were the most important time of my life. Everything else is to be derived from this. It began at that time, and the later details hardly matter anymore. My entire life consisted in elaborating what had burst forth from the unconscious and flooded me like an enigmatic stream and threatened to break me. That was the stuff and material for more than only one life. Everything later was merely the outer classification, the scientific elaboration, into integration into life. But the numinous beginning, which contained everything, was then. C.G. Young, 1957. And so this is a, a huge breakthrough in psych psychological studies, especially when it comes to Jungian analytical psychology. Um, this is the only video I'm probably going to make directly on the Red Book because, frankly, this is such an odyssey into one man's psyche and indeed uh, a, a, a look into the collective unconscious that it would take videos upon videos to analyze it. Uh, there are classes right now being offered in graduate institutes of, of depth psychology persuasion that have whole classes that discuss this book, so I don't feel like I am even adequate to even go into an exact analysis of it. But it was a very fascinating thing to read. Uh, you find you find yourself very connected to um, humanity when you're reading this book, uh, and you learn a lot about Jung and the origins of what later becomes his major theories. And indeed, that this is the nucleus of of all of it. So this is this was the missing puzzle, and I think that if Richard Knoll ha reads this book. He will see that his criticism of Jung and his books uh, are uh, misplaced, uh, considering that uh, Jung's personal views on, as close as we are, we are going to get about his exact views of God, uh, contradict the conclusions made by Noel in his books. So, um, indeed, one of the reasons why this was published, Sano Shamdasani uh, basically agreed with uh, Jung's heirs that this should be published to basically... Uh, refute Noel, or they, so that way Jung could refute Noel from the grave. Those are my words, but that's essentially what, uh, if I could summarize, what the point, of, uh, one of the major points of agreement to publish this now was to uh, basically have Jung refute um, certain critics from the grave. So, uh, yeah, this is my, uh, again, I'm going to put a lot of different videos and articles in the description section so you can gain a little bit more background information on the, on the book, but, um, yeah, so this is uh, something to think about, and again, I'll be talking more uh, of Jung's about more of Jung's uh, theories as he consciously articulates them later on in his works. But this is where it all began, as far as Jung's immediate um, original theories of the psyche, the the conscious, the ego, the collective unconscious, and symbols of transformation, and indeed about uh, religion as well. Thank you everyone for watching. Peace be with you all.